Hello and welcome again to my list of instructional videos. Today I will be showing you guys how to make a button, which is really simple and the definition of button in Corona is click this, does that. So basically in this one we just have it so this text file and or text right here, which we already showed you how to import text, is taking this text and every time I click on something it's going to move it or something and the button I'll be clicking on is just an image right here so as you can see when I tap it it moves down now you can have it do anything you want you can have it move all over the screen you can have it move right left up down or somewhere else or you can have it just completely disappear if you want to but to create a button you can either set it as the background or something else but for this one, and for most ones, you always want to have your button as a picture. In this case, we just did a little blue box. So let's pull up our code for this and see what we're talking about. Okay. As you can see, we this right here, this doesn't really matter. This is just telling it the system to print the height and the width of the whole screen as when it's printed up. What really matters is basically all this down here. This may not look important down here, but it actually is. But we'll get that back to that when we do. Let's start up here with the button image. We named it my button and the button image but you can name it anything you want. You can change the button image.png or jpeg or whatever to anything you want to. The name, as we recall, is a name that we gave it back or gave the loading the new image something to call back to. This right here, as you can see, it calls the name of the image and it says x and y and them are just coordinates. Display.content width puts it at the center of the screen or putting the slash 2 with it puts it at the center of the screen but if you wanted to just uh, put it like at the center of the screen and then move it around or um, move it around actually you would put plus or minus 75 or any number that you want next what we have here is our text object and as you recall we already know how to put in text objects from the last video I made. But just to re-illustrate, you got your um, name for the text object, and then you got what it equals when you um, do the text object. So when you use the te call text object, it's going to display new text, and that text is going to be button tapped. And right here is our coordinates of the text object here is our font of the text object and here's the font size of the text object this right here it's just text color we can change it to any color we want blue green red purple yellow anything but then here's the main structure of the te of the button as you can see right here we're we're naming it a function and that's just not going to be a local or a global value or anything. It's actually going to say, hey, this is something that needs to be done. So it's saying, it's calling the my button image and then saying on tap, it's going to make an event. So if the button is tapped, we're going to take text object, display the content width minus 120, then text object dot y equals 30 else so if that if it does that then else do text object dot y now equals text object dot y plus 50 now you can change it to anything you want so like you can do uh, text object dot y plus 150 and then if we do that, let's try this again. Reload it. Now as you can see, oop, yep, there we go. It goes down at a much faster pace. My bad actually, this is a text wrap, I believe. 
So it's saying if the text object dot y is greater than display content width minus 120, which is what we have set down here at the bottom of the screen, then it's going to take that and put it right back up to 30. Now let's get back to no, let's get down to the bottom of this. This right here may not look important, but it actually is. It's calling my button, but it's saying add event listener. An event listener tells it to listen for a tap, a touch, or automatic stuff to happen. And this, in this case, it's doing it for my button. Now, if we didn't have this, so let's say we just wanted to comment this out and try it with it, it doesn't want to work anymore because it's not listening for the object and it says no errors because there's no listener so it doesn't want to follow your orders so let's comment that back in because that's not what we want we'll save that put it back up here reload it now it works again but let's say like instead of just tapping it 20 million times over and over again you just wanted to touch it and it moves that's easy you just change it to touch save now when you reload it you can just touch it if it will want to work. Well, basically, I'm guessing it's not supporting it right now, but if you change it to touch, then what would happen is every time you touch the object or the image, it'll move the uh, text object instead of you tapping it 20 million times. Well, that's about it, so thank you for watching my video.